Alright guys, this is going to be a solo flawless shattered throne without using any pinnacle weapons or raid mods. Um, it's going to be on a warlock. I've done this style of run on a hunter like a couple of weeks back, so I'll just post in the description for hunter mains who want to see that and miss that. I'm not going to redo the hunter, I feel. Um, I fully explored that. So we'll do a warlock run um, now and then a titan run later down the road. Um, I could do it any time I wanted, but I don't like to do similar type of content back to back, so I might do it like next week or the week after, depending. Um, but like I said, this is going to be a warlock run, not utilizing any taken mods. Uh, that includes taken spec, taken barrier, taken invigoration, taken armaments, taken repurps. And you don't need none of those mods for this dungeon, and this dungeon over time has gotten easier just because the longer an act, uh, the longer an activity has been out the most um strats are found out best ways sandbox changes since this dungeon came out um when this dungeon came out we were in a sniper meta mainly whisper of the worm and stuff like that so um a lot of things have changed um swords weren't as prevalent so my loadout is as follows, so weapons, I'll talk about that first, we had the Whispering Slab on, a Kinetic Bow, which is available via the Umbral Engrams, I had Demolitionist on it, which works out um, really good, having a long range Kinetic weapon on to take snipers out, and not having to waste special ammo on them, is really good. A bow, especially if you have Taken Spec, but this run is without Taken Spec, but if you do have Taken Spec, you can put that in. You'll one shot snipers. If you have an explosive round bow, which unfortunately Whispering Slab doesn't come with explosive rounds on it, um, but if you do, that will actually help to one shot snipers. But I highly recommend if you haven't got Taken Barry on, put on an overload bow because when you overload the enemy, you take a 10 15 percent reduced damage or 10 percent, whatever it is. I don't know the exact percentage, but it's requ it's equivalent to half of a Taken Barrier. If you think about it, just think of that for a second. So it's like half of what a Taken Barrier would do. And for people who don't have Taken Barrier, that's OP. That's very powerful. Um, I won't talk too much about what I'm doing. Th this video is dedicated to people who already know the mechanics, really. But I'll explain briefly. It's the same as Pit of Heresy. So we're looking for symbols. Uh, it's a big map. Um, and we're, so we have double-headed snake. So we know where that is. Um, there's plenty of maps for this online, so if you need to learn this area and you're new to it, you need to learn that. Look at a map, there's plenty of those, um, people have made maps. If not, just explore this area before you start doing uh, solo runs. Um, explore the area, know where all the symbols are. If you don't, that's fine, just r run around the map till you see red on your radar, it's as simple as that. Um, obviously we can use Devour. So we're on a Devour uh, Voidwalker, that's a Tournament of Control, bottom tree. Um, so when we proc our nade we can get a kill every 9-10 seconds. It just pairs so nice with a sword, we're using Fallen Guillotine. Uh, that is available via the Umbral Engrams. Telesto, an exotic fusion rifle. Been sold by Zer a million times, it's a world exotic drop. Um, it's not essential to have Telesto on. Uh, I paired it because I've got the exotic helmet on Nezrik Sin. So Nezarek Sin, uh, for every Void Kill you get, you get increased ability energy, right? Uh, so this means you're going to have a lot of Nova Bombs, uh, Grenades, everything, Rifts. So that's why I just picked a good Void Weapon, and Telesto is one of the strongest weapons in the game for special weapons. Um, I feel as though it's common, it's one of the most common weapons, but it's very strong. Uh, really good in this dungeon as well. Uh, it's just fun to use Telesto every now and then. Uh, you could have used your turn alternatively. That would have worked really well in this dungeon. But like I said, I'm using an Ezrix build, so I wanted to use less stuff. As for our armor perks, um, we utilized a charge of light build. Um, so we had high energy fire, which gives us a 20% damage buff while charge of light. Uh, and then we need to pair that mod with mods that enable us to get charge of light. We had shield break charge on and a taken charge. So every time we break a shield, we get charge of light. Anytime we pick up an orb, which happens a lot on Devour, because we're next to the ads, we're picking up the orbs as we're going. 
especially when we're swording. So we're constantly getting charge of light that way. Um, I utilize charge of light for a lot of the run. Um, it's not essential, the charge of light, but um, the gun safe, I guess, sells them. So if you weren't around that season, uh, when they were available, the gun safe sells them as well. I feel as though a lot of people have charge of light mods as well, to be honest. Uh, unless we're talking about brand new players. Uh, we had a lot of load of, like weapon perks. I'm all about weapon perks. When I'm specking for solos, it's all about reserve perks, loader perks, matching what we want on. Um, so I had an enhanced full loader perk on with uh, enhanced impact induction. So when we get a melee, we get increased grenade energy like you just saw uh, just then. Pairs nicely with Devour. And we had a concussive dampener on which you can stack these up to five times but just to give you a brief overview of like people are getting themselves a little confused with this concussive dampener basically it reduces area of effect damage that does not include direct hits most of the damage that you receive is direct hits but that depends on what you're up against. Like, if you're Peter Ferrisy, Concussive Dampener is powerful. Like, if you're trying to sword the boss, um, having two or three Concussive Dampeners is really nice because it, um, it defends against, like, solar damage. Like, say if there's a solar pool on the floor, like, you're standing in that, you're getting, you're getting a benefit there. But if you're just getting sniped in the face, right, Concussive Dampener is not going to help you with that. That's where your resist mods will help you. I didn't rock any resist mods, but you could totally do that. Um, they stack as well. So one or two mana resists would be nice in this, because there's a lot of adds, and maybe even a major resist, uh, as you're up against a lot of majors. A boss resist, no need for that, because whenever we're dealing with the bosses, which is only two in the entire dungeon, so you don't need to spec for boss resist. But when we do deal with bosses, we have strats for that. We have our abilities. We're on a warlock. We have all the things to deal with the bosses. Now we're on the last major on this start encounter. Like you saw from the run, it's really good with a sword. Not much to it. It's a fun encounter. Basically the same as uh, Pit of Heresy, the open encounter, apart from that there's no sword mechanic. In my eyes, it's actually a better opening mechanic, uh, an opening encounter than Pit. It's just, it's just a funner one. Uh, as the sword, after a while, the sword mechanic in Pit just gets a little old. Um, but we're doing a shot front, so we're talking about that. So now we've dealt with that. We're going to switch off Void Walker. This is the first time we're doing that. And then we're going to switch to Top Tree Dawnblade. The reason for this is so that we can get some skips going. In the next couple of rooms, um, and Dawnblade's good for that. It's a it lasts a long time. Um, could have used Bottom Tree, but Top Tree's got the um, Twilight Garrison dodge. So I prefer using Top for when we're skipping encounters. We're not going to skip this part here. We're going to build up our super. We've kept Nesrik Sin on because Nesrik Sin is a. That's why it's my favourite Warlock exotic because it's class neutral. Um, there's also other class neutral uh, exotics, so the exotic, uh, the warlock has a lot of good things. But I would say Nezarek is probably one of my favourites, just because it's working as a passive buff as long as you're specking to void. If I'm not specking to void, then I'm not using it. Uh, but if you're using void weapons, it's the go-to for me. Um, like I said, cause it's, it's neutral. Class neutral. So before we go up top, we are going to take out all the snipers with the bow. It does not one shot because this bow does not come with explosive on and I'm not allowed to use Tegan's back. So, but it's just fine, the two shot. And I, I prefer using Overload anyways, I really like Overload on bows. Uh, we're going to save some of the ads down below. The reason why we do that is because we've got a perk on called Heavy Finisher. And if the game wasn't kind to us and we're not getting ammo drops, then we can save these ads and use a heavy ammo, heavy ammo finisher kill on them. Um, funnily enough, it's a really good idea. I have a heavy ammo finisher as a alternative to have uh, high uh, taken armaments. Thing is, I was lucky enough to get ammo in the run, and I can only put it down to put on a heavy ammo finder, put on the finder perks that you are using. Okay, um, they work, and they 
help out for ammo wise. So we have plenty of sword ammo. We've got a brick down below. The major is a solar shield. I didn't expect the major to be there. Usually the major's in the middle, but fine. We were saving a solar nade as well just to help out with that. We'll take out the remaining adds and we're also building up towards our super. We want a super just by the end of this part, around about. We'll pick out pick up our remaining brick. If we did not have a brick there, what we would have done is got an add weak down below that we saved. Doing a heavy ammo finisher kill and then we would have had to wait for an extra super energy, but we would have then therefore had full ammo because what it is we're prepping for the next boss fight. Uh, we don't want to be going to the boss fight and having to farm ammo while doing it. Um, just because it, it's just nice just to start an encounter. The thing is with this dungeon is it, you, there's no rally banners. Okay? So that's why we're optimizing. And we don't have armaments, so we're, we're uh, planning ahead. That's all we're doing with it. So with the skip for this part, you can get through without using a super and using tank and barrier and whatnot. But without that, you're increasing the risk of you dying. This is a video for solo flawless. It's not a video for solo. It's for the flawless as well. There's no benefit to getting as flawless compared to a solo, but in the nature of uh, how challenges are now, and that there's emblems tied to solo flawless, I just thought I'd do solo flawless on the shot front. Um, if they ever make another dungeon, it'll be the same. It'll be solo flawless, just like Pit was and Prophecy. This is—it's just because this was the first ever dungeon that they done, so they didn't know what was going to happen with it. They maybe thought it would be too hard for people to get the solo flawless, so they just made an emblem for solo rather than the flawless. But um, point still stands. So now we're going to pop a super about halfway across this map, and we're just going to use our dodge, our pilot um, garrison ability if they ever bring it back it's going to be weird if titans have it and warlocks and that's a little unfair on the hunter but apparently the hunter's getting blink back so um they, sh they shouldn't have removed uh, blink from hunters anyways and they need a buff blink i think but anyways we're going to use a consumed we're going to consume our nade for heat rises just so that we get that increased ag agility in air you basically get an infinite jump for 10 seconds or so. Um, to get the ogre skip in this room, um, you've got to be consistent. You've got to make sure that you know exactly what you're doing. If you don't, just take out the ogres with your long range weapon. Uh, Telesto can even take them out, believe it or not. And bows, or you can switch to snipers or whatever you want. But the skip's easy enough, especially on top tree. It's forgiven. You've got that double dodge. In case you fall off the map, you've even got a sword paired with it. Uh, I try not to use much sword ammo though. Um, we are going to use some sword ammo in this sprawl way though. You don't need to clear any ads in this room, but we are going to get super. We want to start the boss fight, the ogre boss fight, the first boss fight with a well of radiance. Just makes it a little easier. Rather than speed run to the boss, because this isn't a speed run, this is a how to solo floors without any rare mods. Uh, completely different. So what we want to do is we're going to build up on we're going to use Nezrik Sin to build our well which does not take long especially with these ads. Uh, you have no health regen and you're also slowed in this encounter this part. Just be aware of that. That's why we end up saving a nade. The nade is a, a crutch in case we get weak. We can also use our Telesto as well, which I decided to do. I just Telesto on my feet. But I know I should get a heavy brick, so that gives me a license to use a bit of sword. And we we'll start building up. <clears throat> now, like I said, I've got the um, ING Fire build on. Um, that does not work with Well of Radiance. So don't bother. If you're going to do Well... I mean, if you're doing Nova, yeah, it's going to combine with Nova Bomb, right? But if you're going to do it the way I did, um, don't bother about 
um, optimizing your charge with lights, <clears throat> as in having charge with light proc when you start to deal damage to the Yoga boss. Because the thing is, Well of Radiance is a buff. Charge with light is a buff. You cannot stack two buffs together in this game. You can only stack a buff and one debuff. That's why Nova Bomb, um, oppressive sorry, oppressive darkness debuff and high energy fire. They are they are higher than what just a well would be, like in terms of uh, the amount of damage you'll be able to get out. Thing is with well though, is it's safe. Um, Especially if you sword, which we're going to sword the boss. We're going to put a boss spec on our way sword as well. We had major spec on initially, as we were sorting all the mages at the start of the encounter. So, um, now we're switching off. Uh, we're not going to be using our sword on any mages. It'll be just the boss. We'll save all sword ammo for the boss. This part, we can skip all the ads. We have super. Um, if you didn't have super, this is another point to an opportunity to get ammo if you were low on it or super energy. So, I just prefer to kill the ads in the thrall way though. Like I said, we want a well to start the ogre fight with. We're going to one phase it, so we're spec to one phase the fight. Um, We'd also spec to handle all the ads as well and wizards. That's the big thing with Telesto. You need void weapons for this. Uh, you need a void weapon, at least one, um, just to help out with breaking uh, shields. As it, it can be quite urgent that you need to do that at any point. We're going to do well at the back of the map because at the back of the map is the most dangerous part. As there's less cover, the ogre can hit you, and all three wizards from behind can hit you. Obviously, there's four wizards in total, and each wizard has a bunch of ads surrounding them. Um, when you kill a wizard, you get a buff. You need to get that four times. It's not a buff, but it's a mechanic. You need to get it four times to dunk in the middle to then take the ogre shield down. That's the, the mechanics of this fight. But what we're doing is we're prepping all the ads like as in killing them all or, or what we can and then getting wizards half elfish we're also working towards our next suit but what would have probably been better is if i'd put on phoenix protocol on my first well um retira there i end up getting super in time anyways This is our safe zone as well. At the back of the map, it's much safer here than it is at the top. That's why we had a well for the top of the map, because that's the dangerous part. Once you've done that and got the ads down and prepped it, uh, you're good to go at that point. But they have some ammo for Telesto. Uh, if you do run out, you could start using sword and stuff. Um, as you don't need all your ammo, I guess. My sword is my, my uh, fallen guillotine has relentless strikes while in blade. So make sure that um, you have a sword like that. Okay, so now we're just uh, prepping this wizard on the left. If you do get weak like that, just make sure that you know your environment and where to run to and stuff like that. There was one more ad left, that was fine. He dropped a heavy brick as well, which we can utilize that later. So now we've prepped the final wizard. Now I just I do things in my way. Um, people would have maybe just started killing the wizard from that side, whatever, but um, I just work from this back wizard first. And then I work my way clockwise around the room. That way that I get to the final wizard on the side that I want to be on. It's just a side I always take first. Uh, it, that doesn't matter. It's just preference. It's just because of um, how we can manipulate the ogre. Which I'll get into when we get to it. 
and we've got petitioners mark times three we'll get our last wizard once you kill the last wizard you don't need to immediately dunk you've got like 40 seconds or 45 i think it is so, um you've got plenty of time to win there was one sniper alive for some reason we did have charge with light but like i said you don't need charge with light because we've got a well so what we're going to do is um crouch behind this cover the aggro the ogre that's what it does because the ogre can't see you when he's behind the pillar like so we can get our dunk without him knocking us back we do get weak here which was to be expected um it always happens and then we can just well him and guard him we can do a nade as well for additional damage and then we heavy attack when we've got our charge we've got sword master's guard on my fallen guillotine as well um, not essential to have a god roll, but at least if you have whirlwind blade, then you're good to go. And that was the one phase on the ogre. Super simple. Uh, with fallen guillotine, any sword would have worked as well. I'm just using fallen guillotine because it's popular at the minute. So now what we're doing is again, just like with this fight, we're prepping it in advance for the final boss. So we're going to put on the weapons um, that we need, that we want to use. Um, so I'm using xenophage. I'm using trophy hunter which is a, <clears throat> a weapon you don't see too often and it's going to be getting sunset as well not this light level drop but it, the one after I think I think I, I can't remember what, what light level it's getting sunset, sunset at it might be 1260 don't quote me on it but the point of it is any sniper will do you basically long shadow is, is probably a better option than, than this one um, but any god rolled sniper that you have or good rolled sniper uh, put that on. We're also using Xenophage for ease of use. Exotic. And then we've uh, kept a bone for now. But we end up swapping. We picked up all the ammo drops that we got from that fight. Because we didn't use any sword ammo. Um, all the ammo drops that we were getting. We could pick up after the fight. So that way we don't need to re-farm up ammo. While we're running to the final boss. So all, the, all we need to do is farm super right now we're on well of radiance and we need to stay on well because of the charge nade mechanic that you can do the reason for that is it helps you to get a skip i see so many people i watched um marco style that, that guy uh who's come from division he went to come to our community but uh i watched him and his first goes on the dungeons done well and whatnot and his first tries it's really good but it's just a case in point that people don't know all these little things like shortcuts that you can take and stuff like that just because it's their first times um, but right now what we're going to do is farm up another nade as we used a nade there to bypass all those ads uh, so we are our boys demolitionist on that's what's handy about it so we're, we're re-farming a nade up that's uh, our crutch so th this is how we can bypass all the ads with Tank and Barry you can do it as well as you can just bypass but you probably wouldn't even need a nade for an overshield. But we're using the nade. I get that we have the nade up just in case. Because it just depends. You might get weak trying to bypass them. But as long as you jump over the knights, you're full health, you're good. There's a couple of snipers in here. Luckily none of them hit me, so But if they were to get you like half health, do a nade to be safe. But if you do use a nade there. You're going to have to wait for your nade back. It's essential to have your nade. For this next part that we're going to do. So you can wait here freely. Before these captains. Before they do their walls. And whatnot. And then when you got your nade you can bypass them. We're going to try to jump over them. It's risky-ish. But it's not nothing too major. To bypass them. So now talking about the skip saves a good bit of time and it's easy to do it's there's nothing difficult about it it's the easiest one to do it on a warlock i actually done it differently um so you basically have to charge your nade and jump at the same time i jumped to the ring above and then jumped across the better way of doing it is actually just to hold your nade and then literally you can just jump right across and get the shock up I do it differently. I don't know why I do it like that. I think because I do it like that on the Hunter. And it's, the Hunter was the last run I done. Now we're going to swap to Stormcaller Top Tree. As it's like a really good super to clear adds. 
deal additional damage to the three knights and to maintain charge of light. I'll talk more about when we get to it. Um, we're going to switch to a masterwork. I haven't masterworked this bow yet because I haven't got a god roll on the Whispering Slab yet. Like the roll that I want, so that's why I haven't masterworked it. But we're going to switch to a masterwork weapon so that we can start getting some orb generation. We've got on Crown of Tempest the exotic helmet to get increased ability regeneration. But just the same thing as Nezarek Sim, but it's only for ability kills. And then you get conduction times, and you can stack that up to three times, and you can see the super energy and everything charging up very fast. So, <coughs> pardon me. So we're using the unlimited spawn here from this uh, from the thrall, the taken thrall, to basically farm up super. We need a full super for this boss fight before we start it. Before we activate any knights, essential you have a super. If you don't, then you want to do it. If you're not doing it like this, there's different ways of doing it. Okay? This boss fight, you can do it so many different ways. There'll be 20, 30 different ways of doing it. You can utilize things like Whisper of the Worm, Risk Runner, probably the best primary in, like, probably the best primary to use for this boss fight if you're not one phase and knights. Because you can survive everything, everything's arc. There's so many different ways of doing it. You can use Anarchy, you can use Wither Horde, you can use Horde. You can use so many different things. But I really like the way we're doing it here. So we've got charge of light times two. That's really important. So make sure you get your charge of light times two before you come up here. And you have just about your super. Which I do. <clears throat> the important thing here is that charge of light is a weapon buff. It is not a buff to anything else other than your weapon. So... How Charge of Light works is when you kill an enemy, you lose that buff. Right, so it's ideal for bosses because you're not killing them until you get the kill. And then when you do, you know, you've had that 20% damage buff while you've been doing DBS. The thing is, though, we have adds to kill, but we're going to have our super kill adds. That way, we keep Charge of Light for all DBS on knights. We'll lose it at the boss, but the boss is, isn't tanky. The knights are tankier than the boss, probably. You know? So... We've also got a sniper on so that we can, you know, deal massive damage to the boss because the boss has a higher precision multiplier on him for some reason. So, how to start this? We're going to do three or four shots to each knight. Uh, when the adds spawn in, we're going to do a arc ball grenade on the right side. We can do it on the left side, doesn't matter. As soon as we've done that, the knights will get close. We're going to super the scions immediately. They are the priority. Once they're down, you have tons of time at this point, so we can use the rest of our super on the knights. They gr they're grouped up as well, which is ideal, so we're doing damage to all of them. Then at that point, we've still got charge of light, so we can do a couple more shots. You need to avoid them. Of course, you've dampness saved us there, to be honest. And then we can do <coughs> the remaining shots on the three knights. Then we need to make sure we get our final four times three buff. Once you've done that, pick a pillar in your room, any pillar. Use your remaining Xenophage ammo. <clears throat> and then we can switch to our sniper. Whatever sniper you've chose, switch to. As you see, you do massive damage to the boss. Uh, I just wanted to try this um, trophy hunter out, and it's really good for boss damage. Missed a shot there, but we've got plenty of time. Got triple tap on it as well. Then we can finish off the um, boss on there. So that was the uh, solo shattered prone. Flawless without any rear mods or pinnacle weapons. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you.